you can buy hummus easily, but this one is so easy to make and so delicious. So let's get started. I want to recommend the book that I got this recipe from, and that is the Kick Diabetes Cookbook. You don't have to have diabetes to love this book. It was written by Brenda Davis and um, Vanesto Molina. Uh, Brenda Davis is a dietitian, registered dietitian, who went plant-based, I think it's 26 years ago, uh, before dietitians ever even talked about that. And she not only has nailed it, but she has come up with fabulous recipes that can help the rest of us choose how to eat well, regardless of our health. My health was going downhill two and a half years ago, and I completely turned it around with a whole food plant-based diet. So today's menu, one recipe, is the hummus that we have um, almost on a daily basis. We dip vegetables in it. I love sweet potatoes, baked sweet potatoes with a dollop of hummus on it. That's a snack for me instead of crackers. Absolutely fabulous, full of fiber and delicious. So let me show you how we go. I have a small uh, Cuisinart food processor. You can have a larger one. You can use a blender. I just love this because it's easy. I emptied into that one can of garbanzo beans drained. Although I make in my Instant Pot two pound portions, two pounds dry and then soak them and cook them in the Instant Pot of garbanzo beans, drain them, put them in one quart Ziploc freezer bags and they're in my freezer to be defrosted for Salads, I have a huge salad every day. You can see that on my YouTube channel, how I create my chopped salads. They're gorgeous I and delicious. I also use them for stews. You're going to see a, a, um, a Thai chili, green chili garbanzo bean stew. That was fabulous and I just shot that one. And I use them a lot. I didn't have any defrosted. I decided to, that I needed to make a new batch of the hummus so I didn't want to deal with defrosting them in any way because I wanted to make it now so I used my can and I always get as often as I can garbanzos any grains any beans um, organic if I can find them I'll get them and if we get things at for example Trader Joe's the difference in cost was maybe 20 cents for a can of organic as opposed to not organic. So one can of drained garbanzo beans. Into that, I then add spices. And they include, I, add, I added some, um, a tiny bit of cayenne, a little bit of cumin, and some salt. And I wanted to show you, just in case you don't know, what, well, I think you know what cayenne looks like. It's just a red chili pepper. A little goes a long way to add some heat. But what you might not be familiar with is cumin. Depends on where you live in the country. This is a very Southwest or Mexican flavor, Middle Eastern, it's used. It's very distinctive and it's really one of my favorite spices. Um, so ground cumin, goes in a lot of a lot of my dishes and it adds again a distinctive wonderful flavor. I'm putting in four tablespoons of lemon juice and the recipe is on my website so you don't have to write this down. I'm also adding four tablespoons of tahini. Now some of you are quite familiar with tahini and some of you are thinking and saying, well, what is that? Okay, I don't use processed oils, but that doesn't mean that I don't have fat in my diet. This is where I get the fat in my diet, the nut butters, the um, seeds, the seed butters. I have flax and chia seed every morning, either in a smoothie or in my oatmeal, because that's where we get our omega-3s. And this, tahini 
and this one's organic, it's from Trader Joe's, is, and it's not expensive. Now I've seen tahini in some um, specialty stores that a jar this big would be five or six dollars, still worth it, but at Trader Joe's I think it's three something, 350 or 360 or something, and it's delicious, and it's nothing but ground sesame seeds, in other words, hulled ground sesame seeds, period. When you buy it, there's a cap of oil on it. That is organic sesame oil. You can pour some of it out if you want, and you just want more seed, less of its own oil. The thing is that if you pour too much out, you end up with a sort of a caked um, tahini. It's harder to work with. I pour a small amount out, they stir the rest in, and I leave my tahini, as I call it, pourable. You see that? I'll do it one more time, but I don't want to pour it on the floor. Okay, that way I just poured it into the measuring cup and, and I could have poured it out, but I wanted to get every little bit of it. And then the recipe calls for two ground, or two um, teaspoons, no, two cloves of minced garlic. Well. I chop up my garlic in advance. I buy the big, big um, cloves of garlic, not cloves, but um, the, the heads of garlic. And then I peel them and I chop them. Uh, you'll see in some of my um, videos, I'll show you my favorite chopping tool. It's a Tupperware mini chopper that you just pull a cord and I can put 15 or 18 cloves of garlic in it and zip, 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 and then they're all chopped. And then I keep them in this cute little jar that I got somewhere. And I measured to um, get the quantities right. And one teaspoon of my minced garlic is one clove. Um, okay, and then, now that is the base recipe plus a third of a cup of water. However, in her cookbook, Brenda Davis, and I, as I said, recommend this. Um, that is her basic hummus, and then she has additional uh, alternatives. Well, one of her alternatives simply says, and it's called a red pepper hummus, and that's the one we love. Uh, quite frankly, I haven't made the other ones. There's a, a dried tomato, sun-dried tomato hummus, a black bean hummus, um, but this one just, sort of stuck and that's what we've we've continued to do um a third of a cup of fire roasted bell pepper or red pepper you can do this yourself take a couple of bell peppers cut them in half take the seeds out put them in an oven at 375 uh, some like it at 400 and then let them roast about 20 minutes peel off their blackened skin and you've got your roasted red pepper or for a couple of dollars, you can buy this jar. Uh, this happens to be Trader Joe's. They have them at other at other markets and it's delicious. And it's again, close to nature because this is um, bell pepper. Oh, they've got a little brown sugar in there. I didn't know that. A little bit of salt and, uh, oh, it's a product of Peru, but I like it a lot. So one third of a cup, actually I cheated and made it a, keeping third of a cup of this very nice roasted bell pepper. And I even have a little bit of the juice from the jar because I like that. That's why I won't put in the full third of a cup of water. I like to see what the um, texture is going to be and we'll take it from there. So I'm gonna put a little of the water in. That's it. That's as easy as it is to make hummus. Sorry for the sound. Isn't this a nifty little thing? I'm going to stir it down. One time. Oh, the smell is so nice. Down one more time. I'll show you how I store it. And I 
could make it very, very smooth. I like it just a little bit, um, oh, I'm gonna say chunky, but it's not chunky. Uh, but just, I don't want it absolutely completely smooth. So that simply lifts off. If I pull the center out, because this is a full container, I'm going to get some of it running into the middle. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna pour it out um, and then pull the center out. And I'll show you a, a little trick somebody taught me. It, it was one of, I was watching one of Chef AJ's videos. If you haven't looked at her whole food plant-based cooking shows or her interviews, look for Chef AJ, Chef AJ Live. Uh, Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook also does whole food plant-based. You don't have to choose to give up your meat and egg and dairy and animal products as I have. Just add more whole fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, and legumes. The more you eat, the healthier your gut, your microbiome is, and the, quite frankly, longer your life. That sounds like a huge statement to me, but I would stand behind it, and all of my research tells me that. All right, I'm a health coach. I work with patients and have going on three years now uh, with a lifestyle medical um, clinic here in Riverside, California, and we see remarkable turnaround in diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and odd things that have to do with body-wide inflammation, including one of our patients who almost lost his leg. Um, started with a bite from a brown recluse, and they couldn't get a handle on it. And they treated him for, I think it was almost a year, and finally said, you'll probably lose your leg. He went whole food plant-based with a vengeance because he had, um, he was convinced and he had, um, he was inspired. And gosh, he and his wife now, they're about my age. She's a little older than 70. She's four months younger than me and I'm 70. And um, they run around like kids now. Okay, I think a second lease on life or on your leg can do that for you. All right, did you see what I did? I put the blade back in. It, there's a lot of food on there and I'd have to whittle it out. I spun it, oops, sorry, and now the blade comes out clean, and what was on the blade is easy to get out of here. So this is how I store it, and this little bit that's left, when you're off camera, I think I'm gonna put it on a seed cracker. <laughs> it's gonna be an afternoon snack. All right, bang, 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 bang. And this will last us just about a week. This is a two cup bell jar, canning jar. You can use your 12 ounce, but you're gonna have some left over. This is two cups, um, which is 16 ounces. It's pretty, it's a great gift to give somebody and what have you invested um, next to nothing. You can make two of these easily with your one jar of bell peppers. Okay, 